Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I saw some more Mocha 2.5 adapters pop up on Amazon, so I figured I would get some in and see how they perform. Uh, these are from a company called Translite, and they sell them as pairs. And if you're not familiar with Mocha, what it lets you do is extend your home network through your cable TV wiring. It'll work with cable providers here in the US along with satellite, and it works right alongside your existing TV subscription, so you don't lose anything here, but you gain a much more reliable way to transit data around your house. Uh, the best way to set these things up is you put one near your router, connect it up via the ethernet, connect the other end into your cable TV wiring, and then you can buy additional boxes to plug into rooms around your house where you've got cable jacks, and then you can connect up Wi-Fi extenders or computers directly onto the ethernet jacks here on the back and you're good to go. Uh, because these support Mocha 2.5, you should be able to transit two and a half gigabits over your Mocha data backbone. And these can be a very good solution to getting your network extended around your house without having to run new wiring. I like to say that uh, Mocha is almost as good as Ethernet. Uh, it's probably the best solution outside of running direct Ethernet all over your home. If you've got a lot of cable wiring already, these things can save you a lot of money. And we're going to be taking a look at how these Translite adapters perform here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that these came in free of charge from Translite. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these boxes are all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These sell for $175 and they sell them as a pair, which of course is important for Mocha to have a pair of these devices. Like other Mocha devices, they are compatible with other brands that you might encounter and they also work with other versions of Mocha. So this is Mocha 2.5. Uh, we also have Mocha 2.0 and 1.0. Mocha 2.0 was gigabit speeds over the coax. Mocha 1 was 100 megabits. And what'll happen is, is that if you were communicating with a Mocha 1 device with one of these, it'll transit data to that device at 100 megabits per second. It'll do the gigabit to the Mocha 2.0 device and then other 2.5 devices it will work at 2.5 gigabit speeds. Now these have two ethernet jacks on the back and you can plug two different PCs into it. Each of these is a gig each, so you don't get the full 2.5 out of a single connection. And I looked through the documentation and it doesn't appear that you can do link aggregation either to get the max out of these things. So you're going to have two separate gigabit connections on here, but not a single two gigabit connection. Uh, you plug your cable into here for connecting up to the Mocha network, and then you can plug your TV or cable box into this jack here, so you don't, again, lose anything uh, by adding one of these to the room where you have a television. Uh, this is powered by a simple USB connection, a micro USB connection. It runs at five volts, one amp, so very low power consumption. And you've got an on-off switch too on this, which is nice because I don't think many Mocha adapters have the ability to turn themselves on or off. And now what we're gonna do is hook these things up and we're going to run some speed tests on it. Uh, what I want to see is whether or not we can get the full two gigabits or so out of that backbone connection. So we're going to plug one end into two different PCs over there. I've got two other PCs here on the desk that we're going to connect to, and we're going to see if we can push about two gigabits of data over to the other side through these two boxes. Let's take a look. Now, one thing you gotta take a look at in your home before you wire up a Mocha project is the splitters that you might be using throughout your home to get your cable jacks hooked up in each room. If you have multiple cable jacks around your house, there's a good chance you have splitters, and you need to make sure the splitters you're using support a pretty wide frequency range. So this one from BAMF I bought a little while back seems to be working very well with my Mocha 2.5 devices. You can see here it goes from five to 2300 megahertz. When I first started playing around with the Mocha 2.5 adapters, I was noticing the speeds were not uh, getting close to the advertised 2.5 gigabit performance. And what happened in my case was that I had a lot of older splitters that didn't work at frequencies as high as this one is working at. So I had to go through and start replacing some of those older splitters with one of these. Uh, which does support a wider frequency range. So if you're noticing speeds not matching what we're about to see with these, uh, definitely take an inventory of your splitters and that 
uh, might be the key to getting it all working faster. All right, now let's hook this stuff up and see what happens. All right, so we've got the other unit now connected to two PCs on the other side of my room here. And we're now going to connect up this adapter to the other one via Mocha. And although this is a desktop simulation, this is exactly how it'll work when you connect these things throughout your house. So what we're going to do first here is just uh, attach that Mocha cable here to the Mocha jack on the back here and just twist it in. Uh, one thing you really want to do with this stuff is make sure that you've got a really tight connection uh, to each end and to your cable jacks because that's one of the leading causes of issues with Mocha and any other kind of coax connection is that if you don't have a really tight connection, uh, things don't always go as well. Sometimes it might be good to take a pair of pliers out and really get it uh, going pretty nicely there. Now, now that we have the wire connected, what we want to look for is the Mocha light here to light up. And like I said, this will happen automatically. It takes a little bit of time on an initial power on, uh, but usually within a minute or two, the Mocha light will light up, and that will mean that the two devices have found each other on the coax network and are communicating. And you can see here now the light is green and it's ready to go. Uh, next, we're going to plug in my two computers here, and then uh, we should have a functional network where we can transit data. Now, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to send data from the computers over these Ethernet cables. It's going to push it out the coax cable to the other side, and then it will come back again. And that is how it works. You're basically bridging your Ethernet here to the coax network and back again. And these devices serve as that bridge. All right, so we are all connected here. It looks like things are functional. Uh, the lights blinking there indicate that there's some traffic being transited already. So they're probably just sending out some packets randomly here. And we're going to run now what's called an iPerf test and see how much bandwidth we can push through this device to the other side. All right, so we're going to start with a single test just from one computer to the other. Again, we're going to transmit data out of here through the box, through the coax, over to the other side to a computer that is waiting for the data here. But I'm just going to zoom in here so you can get a sense as to the bandwidth we're pushing. Um, so we're getting exactly what I usually get with Ethernet on this device, about 950 megabits per second. And when you account for overhead, uh, we're definitely getting what would normally be, for me at least, a gigabit Ethernet connection from one machine to the next. So we are at least getting gigabit out of this. All right, so now we are going to test two computers transmitting simultaneously to see if this is able to maintain that two and a half gigabit backbone or close to it. So we're going to start the test again on the Mac like we were doing before. And we should start seeing some bandwidth flowing through on here. Sometimes these tests start a little slow and then they uh, pick up as time goes on. That's what's happening right now. So you can see uh, we are now going at full blast here at the 949, 950 megabits per second we had before. Uh, now on the left, I've got another Mac running with this same test going to a different PC uh, out the other Ethernet jack on there. And you can see now we're running both at the same time and hopefully we can get 950 or 949 or thereabouts running simultaneously out of both of these and it looks like we're getting that. So what's happening now is that uh, we've got essentially close to two gigabits uh, going through the Ethernet on here one gig on each Ethernet jack. It's then going through that coax cable to the PCs that are on the other side here. And as you can see, they we're not really seeing any dip in performance here when the second PC started transmitting. So it looks like we are getting uh, the advertised Mocha 2.5 bandwidth out of these TransLite boxes. Now, each of these devices has a control panel you can log into. You do need to change the IP address of your computer to get to them. This is the default IP of each of the boxes that you'll have. Uh, once you get in here, the control panel actually looks a lot like the control panel for the Go Coax adapters we looked at a few weeks ago, so they must have some hardware in common. Uh, there are some settings you can adjust here for transmit power. Uh, I would leave all of this alone just because it's working out of the box and I wouldn't mess with it, but if you des desire to do so, you have some controls here and there's more details about uh, some of those settings in the instructions. Uh, there are security settings on here like there are on other Mocha devices. Now, like the Go Coax adapters we looked at a few weeks ago, these have an MPS button. They're right here on the back. Uh, so what you do is you set up security through that web control panel on one unit, and then when you want to add additional units to the encrypted network, all you have to do is push down the MPS button on the device you've already configured, 
and then push it on a second device and that will get it automatically added without having to go into the control panel. Uh, the only difference between these and the Go Coax on that feature is that the MPS button's a little bit harder to get to on these. You have to have a pin or a paper clip to get at it. Uh, the Go Coax have a simple button on the top of the unit. However, the security is Mocha standard security, so you can have a Go Coax box on your network along with these, and as long as the password matches, uh, they will talk to each other. Uh, one other thing of note here is that you can uh, take a look at the health of your Mocha network. Uh, so for example, what uh, I've done here is I've connected up a Mocha 1.0 device to our little coax network here, and you're able to take a look at what the data rates are between them. So for example, uh, this is adapter number zero, and I can connect to adapter one here at uh, 3656, basically three gigabits and change, uh, but we lose a lot of that to overhead on the Mocha network here, which is why they say it's a 2.5 gig adapter. Um, but you can see we get the full speed out to adapter one, which is the other translite box that we set up. And then I've got this older Mocha 1.0 device, and you can see that one runs at a much lower speed. Uh, so if I communicate from zero to two, uh, you get a slower connection than what you would get between zero and one. But what's nice about this is that it doesn't slow the whole network down if you plug in an older device or want to keep using your older devices with the new one. And this page here is a great way to keep an eye on uh, what's connected to your network and how it's all working. So overall, this is a nicely performing Mocha 2.5 adapter. It looks to be performing just as well as the Go Coax adapters we looked at a few weeks ago. And you might be wondering, is this one any better than the Go Coax? It really isn't. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the difference, though, is that you get two Ethernet jacks on it, two one gig Ethernet jacks versus a single Ethernet connection on the Go Coax device. So if you are looking to attach more than one device to your Mocha adapter, then this one might be the way to go. At the moment, they're only selling these as pairs, uh, and the per unit cost here, it does cost a little more than the Go Coax does, but if your intention is to plug a switch into your Go Coax device, you'll probably be spending about the same either way. So really, the difference here is the additional Ethernet connection, and if you need that, uh, then these might be the best way to go. Uh, one thing I could envision doing with one of these is maybe having uh, one direct connection to your game console or other device where you want that low latency connection. And then the other one, uh, you could hook up a Wi-Fi access point and extend your Wi-Fi out. So it's kind of nice to have the ability to plug two different things into a single device uh, without the need for a switch. Uh, these devices don't add pretty much any latency that's noticeable. It might add a couple of milliseconds here or there, uh, but I think for most folks this will be perfectly fine. And even for gamers, that added millisecond or two is probably not going to make a big difference, especially given how much more reliable the connection is going to be. And always at the end of the day, Ethernet is best, but uh, Mocha is probably next to the best uh, for extending out your network and you likely already have the cable wiring in your home. And if you are not using your cable wiring anymore, but have it still, uh, you can run this without any other cable TV connection going over those cables. In fact, I do that over portions of my home right now. So that's going to do it for the Translite Mocha adapters. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht. Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.